Hamafke Daf Mem Gimel sponsored for Shalema for Yecheskel Ben Bria. The Mishnah discusses one who deposits money with a money changer. Number one, if the money is bound, he cannot use it, so if lost, he is not responsible. If the money was Hegdesh, deposited by the Gizbar with the money changer, he would violate the prohibition to misappropriate temple funds. Two, if the money is loose, he can use it. He becomes either a Shoel or Shomer Sachar and is responsible. One who deposits money with a householder, regardless whether the money is bound or loose, he cannot use it. The money changer is always in need of money. Therefore, the depositor must indicate by binding the money that he does not want him to use it. A householder, on the other hand, requires no indication. The status of a storekeeper is a machlokas. Rabbi Meir holds he is like a householder. Rabbi Yehuda holds like a money changer. The Gemara wonders why money bundled suffices since everybody bundles their money. Rav Asi answers, additionally it had a seal. Rav Mary answers, it was tied with an unusual knot. Rav Huna claims the money changer is liable even for onus. He holds that he has the status of a shoel. The Mishnah states, lost. He interprets this to mean either stolen by armed robbers or the money was on a ship that capsized. Rav Nachman holds that the money changer is not liable for onus. He holds that the money changer is a shomer sachar since he can use the money only if a business deal presents itself. The term lost in the Mishnah is literal. The next Mishnah discusses a custodian who misappropriated a deposit and then destroyed it. Be, there, the Mishnah brings three opinions. Beishamai holds, if it went down in value, he pays its value at the time of its misappropriation. If it went up in value, he pays its present value. Beishil holds, he pays its value at the time of its removal. The Gemara will explain what that means. Three, Rabbi Akiva holds he pays its value at the time of the claim of the owner. The Gemara suggests a few possibilities to explain the argument of Beishamah and Beishilo, but concludes they argue who is entitled to the physical improvements to a stolen item based on an argument between Rabbi Hud and Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir holds if one steals a U, for example, sheared it, or it gave birth, the thief is required to return everything. Rabbi Yehuda holds he returns only the U because he acquires the change based on the principle Shinui Kone. Although Rabbi Meir holds also Midoraisa Shinui Kone, he holds the Chachamim find him not to benefit from the theft. Meishamai holds like Rabbi Meir that the thief must relinquish any benefit, even its increase in value, Beis Hillel holds like Rabbi Yehuda that he pays the value at the time of the removal, the time of the theft. Rabbi Akiva holds that a custodian is not considered a, key, a thief uh, to acquire changes until the court decides he is guilty. Based on the verse, La sher hulo biyom ashmaso, unless there are witnesses to the misappropriation, then he pays from the time of the misappropriation. The second opinion of Rabbi Akiva that based on this pasuk, regardless of whether there are witnesses, he pays according to the time of the claim. Although Shmuel holds like Rabbi Yekiva, we follow Ravu, who decided like Beis Hillel, because he is the later opinion of the two.